on the spot. We got a trio of demos with Outland, Red Faction Armageddon, and Operation Flashpoint Red River. And we get updates on the latest coming to Xbox Live and PC. Today on the spot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Today on the Spot for Thursday, March 10th, 2011. I'm your host, Sean McInnes. This is our co-host, Sophia Tong. Sophia, we are here in San Francisco while Ricardo and Maxwell are out in Boston for PAX East. Are you sad that you're not going to PAX? Um, a little bit. I do like PAX in Seattle. I've never been to PAX East. This is actually GameSpot's first time going to PAX East. So I'm kind of curious what it's like, but you know, any kind of way to avoid germs, I, you know. Yeah, two years ago, I think I got swine flu at PAX Prime. The it was piggy sniffles, the, as Guy would call it. <laughs> the piggy sniffles, I got the piggy sniffles at PAX Prime, so uh, I'm sad that I'm not, that I'm gonna miss like the fun and the atmosphere of PAX East. Not sad that I'm not gonna be sick. Yeah, being sick is no good. Yeah, that's no fun. So guys, we have a great uh, trivia bundle to give away at the end of the show. We got a whole bunch of t-shirts and just really cool, fun stuff. Just an assortment, a, a smorgasbord. A smorgasbord. I love buttons. Buttons, yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of cool stuff to give away at the end of the show, but first, let's kick it off with the latest headlines. Hey everybody, it's a GameSpot News update for Thursday, March 10th. I'm Tori Thorson. Kaz Harai has done well at Sony, so well in fact that he's now in line to be its next leader. Reuters reports today that the game industry veteran has been promoted to executive deputy president, effective April 1st. The move puts the 50-year-old Harai in a position to succeed Sir Howard Stringer as Sony's CEO. The 69-year-old Welshman, the first non-Japanese head of the company, is expected to retire in 2013. Quote, this is an opportunity for the board to watch Harai sign and judge his performance. There may be other candidates, but he has a leadership position, Stringer announced in a Tokyo press conference earlier today. The move marks another high point in Harai's ascent at Sony, which he joined in 1984 as part of his music group. In 1995, he transferred to Sony Computer Entertainment in America, rising through its ranks to become its president and CEO. In a 2006 management shakeup, Harai replaced Ken Kutaragi as president of Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. in Japan, where he helped turn around the then money-losing PlayStation business. In other news, the Grand Theft Auto franchise is one of the most recognized and acclaimed in the business. In June, parent publisher Take-Two said that the latest installment, Grand Theft Auto 4, hit sales of 17 million. Now the game is nearing a new milestone. According to a financial presentation posted online, GTA 4 has sold almost 20 million units to retailers. Take-Two noted that this figure represents global sell-in figures as of February 19th, and also includes sales of the GTA 4 Complete and Special Editions. Take-Two also used its presentation to announce that Grand Theft Auto franchise has now sold over 100 million units worldwide and during its lifetime. It joins the FIFA franchise, which will reach the 100 million life-to-date sales milestone in November. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for Thursday, March 10th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Sophia, we've got a giant show lined up for everybody today. We've got not one, not two, but three, three? exclusive demos. That is true. Now, what is the first one? The first one is Outland, this platformer that kind of uses that Ikaruga light and dark thing. Okay. So because it's PAX this weekend, we had some developers come by to show us the game. So let's check out Outland. Game Demo. Hey everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. I'm joined by Adam from Ubisoft, who's a producer on the game Outland. So you brought the game over. What are you guys showing today? So today we're showing the PAX preview build. Okay. Um, it's the first couple chapters of the game, give you a taste of how it plays, what it looks like, that sort of thing. All right, cool. So you have it up and running here. Let's jump in and take a look. Uh, so for those who aren't familiar with Outland or haven't been following, could you kind of give us an overview of what the game is? Sure. So Outland is an action platformer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mix of Prince of Persia with an Ikaruga style mechanic where you're switching between your light ability and your dark ability to deal with puzzles and enemies and challenges and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. Um, so what are we watching right now? So right now what you're seeing is our intro cinematic. It's uh, telling you the backstory of your character. So it occurs in modern times and uh, the character is suffering these visions and he's not sure what's causing them. They're kind of causing him nightmares. So he hears about this shaman in the jungle who can interpret his dreams. So he heads in there and the shaman tells him that there's this ancient conflict that's playing out right now and he's the only one who can stop it. There's always a greater power at work, I guess. <laughs> exactly. All right, cool. So are there going to be a lot of cinematics like this throughout the game? or? No, we really want to keep the player involved in the game. So there's mm -hmm. this intro cinematic and then everything after this is going to be playable. Okay. 
And you mentioned the light and dark mechanics. So um, how does that kind of work in Outland? So in Outland, uh, you start out as a normal character and you gain the ability to switch between your, your light and your dark ability. What that means is um, when you have your light flow, uh, light attacks don't damage you, but dark attacks do. Mm -hmm. Vice versa when you're dark facing light enemies. And so you have to switch back and forth depending on the enemies that you face. And then also depending on your energy between light and dark, that affects the puzzles that you face. Some of the puzzles you have to be light and dark and switching back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that we put on a layer of platforming and combat. So you constantly have to be switching while dealing with these other challenges. What happens is uh, you have this flashback moment where these visions crowd into your head. And what's happening is you are actually getting a peek into the last time this conflict affected our world. Oh. So in our story, 30,000 30, years, years ago, <laughs> every, every enormous calendar cycle, mm -hmm. um, these deities, they try and break out of their prison. And so the last time this happened, there was an ancient hero mm -hmm. that's tied to our modern hero, this ancient hero had to put them back in their prison. And so now I'm actually playing as him. Oh, like okay. That. So you're that guy. Yes. With powers. Yes. So now I'm basically this hero at the end of his quest, mm -hmm. and I can switch at any time. Oh, between light and dark. Between light and dark. So I notice you're collecting little coins. Correct. So coins are my currency that allows me to uh, power up my character, mm -hmm. get more health, more energy. Okay. Interesting. Spirit energy. Spirit energy. So here's a very basic puzzle. Mm -hmm. We have these platforms, and if I'm the wrong alignment, I just pass right through. So if I switch to dark alignment, I can stand on that, and I have to switch in midair to jump onto that one. Very simple, it's the first time we're showing it to the player. Mm -hmm. This is dark energy, which I'll absorb if I'm the correct alignment. If I was the opposite alignment, you would take damage. Correct. So I can collect this, these coins, which I'll be able to use on more abilities later. Will there be health pickups and stuff as you go throughout yes. the game? Yes, absolutely. So here I'm just switching back and forth. Now here's the first time I face an aligned enemy. Mm -hmm. Now, enemy attacks, physical enemy attacks, always do damage. Okay. So regardless I, of regardless, the difference is if I'm the same alignment, I just bounce off. Okay. So I have to switch to the alternate alignment to actually do damage. Exactly. Oh, I see. I assume that once you get the hang of it, it becomes a lot easier. Yes, yeah. The switching of the back and forth and right. remembering what color you should be. Absolutely. And in the beginning, we take it very slowly. Um, this is just a taste of what our mechanic is like um, mm -hmm. further on in the game. After this, you start back at your normal self in the present, and we expose you to these abilities one at a time. So you can learn them and master them before we give you a new ability. All right, great. Oh. So what kind of different creatures will you see as you go so through So mostly, mostly the creatures that you face mm -hmm. are uh, essentially almost mutant versions of creatures you would find in the jungle. <laughs> so spiders, um, dragonflies, uh, lots of critters that you would find just blown up to massive proportions. And the idea is that these deities who are trying to break out, their energy is leaking out of this prison mm -hmm. and it's warping the reality around them. And so you have these creatures which are just normal jungle creatures, but they've turned into these kind Twisted, of perverse weird. Yeah, versions of themselves. Well, it works well with like the whole art style and the lighting and... It looks like a seahorse with wings. Yes. <laughs> So how long does this level go for? So like this flashback, I mean. This flashback is about um, it's pretty quick. I'm I'm just about done, so about five minutes or so. Okay. So this is where you get to play. So you mentioned that you don't have powers like in the beginning of the game. So this is like your chance to kind of get used to it, and then you'll gradually gain those powers as time yes, goes on. Yes. Yes. So okay. once this flashback ends, just a second. Um, 
once this flashback ends and I, I return back to my original self, mm -hmm. um, yes, then I'm essentially powerless, except for some basic attacks. And I have to, uh, I gain them over time. Okay. It's very good. They can talk and still swap back and forth and uh, do all that. Cause yeah. I was hard when I was just focusing on, focusing on it and I didn't even talk to anybody. So these sisters. are the sisters. These are this is ultimately the final boss that you face in our game. Oh, we see them this early? <laughs> yes, we give you just a taste so you understand uh, the challenges that's going to be facing you all the way at the end. Ah. This is kind of like the last level. It's quite a ladder. Yes, <laughs> it's an epic moment. Um, they've been chained inside this prison and they're, they're about to break out and in this past version of the events, this hero is going to stop them. Mm -hmm. Oh, there they are. But we end the flashback there. Okay, so that's just a little tease. So, exactly. looks good. When's the game coming out and on what platform? So the game is coming out uh, end of April, beginning mm -hmm. of May of this year. Okay. And it's gonna be on XBLA and PSN. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by and showing us the pack demo. No problem. All right. And that was our look at Outland. Now, on with the rest of the show. Now it is time for a segment that the cool kids among us like to call Twoxable. And if that doesn't make a damn bit of sense, well, it's actually this week on Xbox Live. This week on Xbox Live, an arcade, leave the safety of town to pursue eternal glory in Torchlight. Torchlight is an action role-playing game developed by the creators of Diablo and Fate. Venture into randomly generated dungeons with a huge variety of creepy monsters, endless loot, and dangerous quests. In games on demand, Kane and Lynch 2 will toss you to the dogs in the gritty streets of Shanghai. After Adam Kane Marcus and James Seth Lynch screw up a basic job, they're forced to take on the biggest crime syndicates in town. When you're done decimating mobsters, take it online and see if there's really honor among thieves. Afterwards, your favorite bandicoot is awaiting your command in Crash Mind Over Mutant. Dr. Cortex is using a new techno gadget to turn Crash's friends against him. Play side by side with Coco in single player or co-op to save the day. Afterwards, grab a board and head to the Antarctic and surf's up. Ride giant swells as Cody, Lonnie, or any of 10 characters from the movie. Use sweet moves to become one with the sea. In game demos, get a taste of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12 The Masters. Enjoy updates to the franchise, such as the caddy experience, new career mode, mid-round saves, and fast golf. XP earned in the demo transfers to the full game. In downloadable content, check out the Da Vinci Disappearance DLC for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the Exiled Prince for Dragon Age 2, and Autumn Tale for Ilo Milo. In Video Marketplace, your eyeballs will thank you for watching the Exiled Prince trailer for Dragon Age 2, the Dreamcast Collection launch trailer, and the Da Vinci Disappearance single-player trailer for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. That's all the time we have, folks. Join us next week for more This Week on Xbox Live. See? Twoxable. It all makes sense. Twoxable. Sophia, uh, changing subjects. We have oh. demo two of three coming up. Tell everybody what they can expect. So demo number two, we have Red Faction Armageddon, an exclusive look at Ruin Mode, which they're kind of showing off right now. So you just get to blow stuff up. It's like Angry Birds, but with weapons. And super crazy advanced physics, right? Yes, that is true. So let's have a look then. Game Demo! Hey everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. I am joined by John Miller from THQ. You guys may recognize him from GameSpot at some point. Some point. Yes. So, you brought t shirts. I did. Yes, you did. And you also bought the game. 100% cotton. Armageddon. Are they? Yes. Oh, they're right, nice and soft. They're actually they will keep nice. you warmer than the surface of Mars. Okay. <laughs> sure. Fact. Really? Scientific fact. Hmm. It's okay, cold well, on the surface of Mars. Huh. I'm sure these American Apparel t-shirts will be just fine. Brushed cotton. <laughs> the game, Red yes. Faction Armageddon. Yes, you brought that by. Very excited to show off uh, a brand new mode today for okay. Red Faction Armageddon. So what mode so is that? That is Ruin mode. So as you know, we have Darius Mason, the uh, protagonist of, of RFA, and he is a demolition expert. And as part of his uh, purview as a demolition expert, it is his duty to destroy as much as possible. And that's what yes. we do in Ruin Mode. This is kind of the spiritual successor to Wrecking Crew in Red Faction Guerrilla. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an objective-based destruction mode. In this Ruin, you basically have one minute. Okay. Pick your weapons, destroy as much as possible. Sounds it's fun. 
It is fun. Yeah, let's jump in and take a look. Yeah, let's go. Show us how boom, much boom, you boom. can destroy in one minute. Now I'm, you should see the Volition guys. They are pros. I am just like a kid, like uh, stumbling around my, you know, my garage, knocking things over. These guys are like demolition experts. All right, let's jump in here. Boom, boom. So there's two modes to ruin. There is a free play, mm -hmm. which uh, gives you unlimited timer. You just go in, destroy at your own pace. Oh, it's like a little sandbox. You just play around yeah. and destroy things. Yeah, and you ha do have repair functionality, so you can bring stuff back to life and just and play around. Uh, but what I think is very addicting is mm -hmm. the competitive uh, mode, which is one minute, and the mm -hmm. leaderboards track against uh, once the, oh, the, the worldwide leaderboards, mm -hmm. but also the your own friends as well okay. on Xbox Live and PSN. So uh, well, let's just jump in. We can choose some weapons here. I what like the magnet show us? gun. The magnet gun. That's already in there. Plasma cannon. That's pretty, pretty solid. Ooh, let's put the singularity cannon in there. That one's pretty awesome. So how Ooh. many can you bring in with you? You can bring in four, and it's a tough choice. I bet. So are all the weapons Ooh. that are available in the game also available in Rune Mode? Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, what's cool is you can, oh wait, here we go, we got one minute. Okay, start so, shooting. So, well, let's just use the Magna Cannon first. Magna Gun, excuse me. So, uh, there's one. So how are points tallied? Just by total destruction? Oh. Yeah, so the faster, basically the faster you destroy things, mm -hmm. that one's gone. Uh, the more items that destroy at once, the quicker the multiplayer uh, bonuses add up for you. So you want to kind of chain these and get one tower to land on another. Exactly. So but basically the more things that are crumbling at the same time. The better. Yeah, the better. So here's obviously, uh, you know, giant explosive barrels are, are fun to bring down. Or if, what's cool about here, if you take out the legs of these towers, they're mm -hmm. doing for some points. Now you can see, like, this is how uh, strangely, I don't want to say it's hard, but I only have six million. I've done some pretty fair <laughs> amount of damage here. And you have seven you seconds left. Yeah, I only have second se so seven seconds. And you can see the par score up there is already 16 million. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Have you ever knocked one of these towers onto yourself? Yeah, it's you, you fall down. <laughs> you don't if die. If you prick you me, get better. Sophia, do I not bleed? It's a tower. <laughs> well, just saying. Um, but yeah, let's do that one more time. Right? But let's put our full effort into it. You didn't have I think we were just tooting around. Let's, let's take it to another level. All same right. map. We'll do the same map. Let's get this. Let's get the singularity cannon out of there. Let's go with the plasma cannon and the plasma beam. These are like some of the coolest weapons. My favorite. Well, this is a charge weapon. Oh, see okay. A nice big explosion. Nice and it goes explosive. through like three different surfaces. So, so that could like traverse the map as it just takes out stuff in its way. So they're definitely weapons that you favor, or do you like to change it up? I love this this gun, the plasma beam, because you basically just slice and dice stuff. And <laughs> yeah. you just do like a 360 with that gun, just like rotate. It, <laughs> it has like a limited supply, ah. but uh, when you're just like taking out giant towers like this, that's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> How big are these maps? They're pretty big. Uh, I mean, there's six different maps. They all vary in size, mm -hmm. um, and with like one minute, I mean, I impossible to destroy it all but you can kind of get a sense here of what we're looking at this is obviously on, time moving on the surface <laughs> of mars i know it's it's hard to destroy and talk at the same time but there you go yeah the towers let's uh let's just like cut right through that building yeah Oop. there you go got one off just in time. so i mean the par score for this is already 16 million that's and nice. that's like the average right now of what people are looking at the Volition guys are amazing at this, and like I think the high score is, uh, no, excuse me, the high right there is uh, yeah. 16. Nothing compared to your 1.8. No, no right I know. There. But uh, let me show you another map. Now, the mall, this is like the uh, successor to our sledgehammer. I don't think you want to use that. I want bigger explosions. That seems like a lot of work, Yeah. A sledgehammer. Ooh. <laughs> How long would that take? Um, the sledgehammer, I don't think you could do that much damage in that much time. Just be like beating on lamp, lamp posts and stuff. Here's yeah, use that ball thing that you showed me earlier. Yeah, well, let me show you the magnet gun. This is like one of my favorites. And pardon me, I know we're not destroying everything. But uh, let's uh, So, yeah. So let's use a magnet gun to 
Uh, how about we take out this building? Let's see if we can get okay. through there. <laughs> oh. Uh, I think, all right. I like how those things just like charted across the screen. Yeah, so. Let's take across the whole map. Oh, pretty far. Did I make it? Nope. Yeah, this is easily like the most fun creative <laughs> weapon in the game. Forget the main game. Just I know, it's this. so easy to, <laughs> and what's cool is like, you can pull, this is like double destruction. Yeah. Like if you pull a key, like a piece of foundation out from underneath and the slide it. The whole thing it, will just so crumble. So that thing can collapse. But at the same time, the piece you pulled is gonna go destroy something else. Ah, so that's a that's great That's how you way. rack up those combos. Oh yeah, like if you're good at the magnet gun, uh, you can be really good at this. Um, oh. Oh. Let's use the ball, though. These I want to see just, the ball. Yeah, these are just tons of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool. So when's the game coming out and on what platform? So uh, Red Faction Armageddon coming out on PC 360 and PlayStation 3 right. on May 31st. May 31st. All right, well, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks, Sophia. And that was our look at Red Faction Armageddon. Now on with the rest of the show. I don't think I can mimic that look from John as well as he can, but so, Rune Mode, you excited for it? I am excited because I'm just a fan of blowing things up, destroying things, and making things that were pretty look really ugly in a pile of rubble on the ground. That's kind of a thing that I'm into. Yeah, you do that with like customization of people too. That is true. That's, eh, it's a hobby, it's a hobby. Anyway, Sophia, what's coming up next? So up next, we have this week on PC. Now, if you guys saw our GDC coverage, you kind of know what Marco Martinez looks like now, but here he is back again to tell you what's happening this week on PC. This week on PC, we have two games from the Independent Games Festival and your download of the week. Tiny and Big Grandpa's Leftovers is an innovative action puzzle game from developers Black Pants. Big has stolen a pair of magic underpants that was handed down to Tiny by his grandfather. Tiny decides to chase Big down and retrieve his stolen family heirloom with the assistance of his ray cutter and rope grappling gun. Just about everything in the world of Tiny and Big is destructible. To get through any level, you have to run, jump, slice, drag, and more utilizing your tools at hand. There's a demo available through the developer's website and has a short install. You can find a detailed first take on Tiny and Big's Grandpa's Leftovers on the Downloads blog at the GameSpot Downloads page. Next, we have Confetti Carnival, an action puzzle game. You control blob-like gummy creatures that explode on content, leaving a mess of bombs filled with confetti. Your main objective is to wipe out all of the confetti bombs, but to do it with style, which gives you bonuses. As you progress further into the game, additional moves are rewarded to you from these bonuses. The controls are easy to pick up after a couple minutes of gameplay, and the introduction of new challenges keeps the game from becoming too repetitive. There's no demo or build available, but we'll let you know when one pops up. To check out more games like this, head over to the GameSpot Downloads page. Finally, we have your download of the week. EA has released a multiplayer demo for Crisis 2. The demo offers two maps, Skyline, which is set on top of rooftops and interiors of skyscrapers, and Pier 17, an open environment with limited cover. The demo offers two gameplay modes, Team Instant Action and Crash Site. For more details, check out the GameSpot Downloads page. I'm Marco Martinez, and that's it for this week on PC. So that was this week on PC. Now we have our third and final demo of the show. What is it? So, Sophia, our third and final demo is for Operation Flashpoint Red River, a sort of uh, realistic, tactical, first-person shooter from Codemasters, uh, a developer that's really well known for racing games, actually, but they're working on uh, Operation Flashpoint. Which branching out. They're branching out. It's a sequel to uh, Dragon Rising. It actually, uh, it's got a lot more character and personality than the last game, and I was pretty impressed by it, so let's have a look at it right now. Game Demo. Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here alongside Sean Lenton from Codemasters who's here to guide us through Operation Flashpoint Red River. Sean, tell us what mission we're on here. Okay, so we're in the uh, campaign, we're on Mission 8, which is the first mission of the third act of the campaign. Um, basically, this is where the uh, US starts to get on its front foot and take the battle back to the PLA. The goal of this mission, ultimately, is to capture the Hissar Fortress, uh, which is a large fortress. We might even just see on the horizon there. There we go, just where my crosshair is there. And that's where we know the PLA are holed out, like a Death Star, basically. Uh, so we've got to take those guys and flush them all out of there. It's a long mission. It'll probably take us about an hour to get all the way there. It's pretty much the average length of our missions in, uh, in, in Red River. 
Now, no, we noticed right off the bat that the uh, the lighting is a lot more dramatic in this game than the previous Operation Flashpoint. Looks like there's even a bit of uh, a crossover from the Dirt franchise that you guys do, right? Yeah, that's right. We're really pleased with the way the game's looking. What we've actually done is we're using the same uh, lighting tech and VFX tech and post-processing tech that the uh, racing studio uses as well. So it's our ego tech basically unifying all of our code across all of the games. Um, and as you say, I mean, it really lifts it. The Sky Dome's are beautiful. It's uh, a real pleasure to play. Okay, so moving in. Also, it doesn't mean you get the glare in your eyes as well, so you've really got to watch what you're doing. All right, got to keep an eye on my fire team now. So, yeah, four players here. We've got four players playing live as well, so I've got to keep following these guys and make sure uh, we're doing the right thing. So I'm heading back to the Humvee now. I'm going to drive on, then we're going to hit another uh, another engagement shortly. So, uh, while we're heading over there, can you describe how the squad system works in this game, particularly how uh, classes are made up? Yeah, of course. So the, the game is really built around four-player co-op from the ground up. So uh, four men in the fire team and four classes to choose from as well. Four classes are Rifleman, who's very much the kind of... Uh, Jack of all trades, the Grenadier, which I'm playing as, who's uh, very much about impact. He uh, is a specialist in close quarters battle and, of course, ordnance and explosives. Um, the scout, I'm looking at now, uh, he's basically the nearest we've got to, um, to a sniper, I guess, and he specialises in uh, long-range attacks and good vision. Not quite as strong close up. Uh, the autogunner we see over here as well. So he's the guy that basically gets to well, use the Mark 48, so on the really big uh, machine guns. Uh, again, he's, he's, his strength is suppression, but his weakness is accuracy. So you get to choose all this in the front end before you go in, you get to choose your loadout, you get to choose what weapons you want to take with you, what attachments you want to take with you. Really fully customizable, We're trying to give the player as much choice as possible. Um, the campaign is drop in and play co-op as well, so you can play, get your friends to join you at any time. And on top of that we've got four what we call fire team engagement modes, which are real kind of jump in and play modes for, uh, for co-op. Uh, Last Stand, which is a kind of a uh, tower defense horde style gameplay. Uh, the uh, Rolling Thunder, which is a convoy escort mode. Uh, Caesar, which is combat search and rescue, and uh, finally combat sweep, which is moving through villages and taking out insurgents. So back on track now, and uh, just quickly talk you through some of the HUD elements we've got actually here while, I, while bullets start flying. One of the new additions we've got at the top left there is our mini radar. This is telling me where my team is, tells me where my fire team leader is, tells me where my squad leader is, and where my objectives are. Also, any uh, any guns that have been dropped, I can get from here as well. Uh, the compass in the top there, you can see we've got solid red triangles and fuzzy red triangles. The difference between these is the solid red triangles are known positions and the fuzzy red triangles are last known positions. So we have this kind of concept of radio propagation where you don't magically know where everyone is. You have to actually radio it in or you have to be told it. Uh, now that's probably a good idea. And then down at the bottom here we've got the fire team status bar. So this is what we use to order our guys around. Just using the D-pad here, I've got left for number one, right for number four, down for number three, and then up for everyone. And I can use the quick command radio. If I was a fire team leader, I could issue orders to these guys. As I'm not actually uh, the fire team leader, I'm, one of the I'm basically a client here. What I've got is I've got kind of responses and so on. So I could do things like I can paint a location if I see someone. Check these A-10s coming in. There they go. Lovely. That's going to clear the ground for us. Um, but I can do things like call for medic. Uh, I can tell people that I'm uh, defending or that I've seen something as well there. Also, you can probably see for number three down at the bottom, it also tells us the status of these guys. So number three is taking an injury. And uh, down at the front there. All right, so as you can see, we've got a lot of PLA here. Up over there. Luckily being the Grenadier, I can switch to a bit of grenade launcher action, see if I can fire one of these fellas off. Boom, there we go. Yep, definitely got some red mist there, that was a kill. So I'm going to be a bit reckless here and start pushing up. In the ground. Okay, move forward. Always keeping in cover. Lots of bullets flying around, you can probably see. Team, Any one of those could kill me if it hit me in the right place, so I've uh, got to play it carefully. Meters north. Target okay, pacified. Oh, hit. All right, I'm bleeding out now. You can see in the bottom right there, my bleed meter. Um, I've also taken a wound to my arm, which is going to affect my ability to aim. But what I can do is I can press and hold A, and that'll patch my wounds up. I've actually got one of the B mods on, one of our specializations, which means I can heal myself quicker. Um, normally, this would be a little bit slower. Uh, we've actually maxed out most of the characters in the game as well. It's probably worth pointing that out. It's so uh, you guys can have a nice, easy play. Because uh, when you start from the bottom... Am I too far forward? Oh, bringing an air support now. I better get out of here. Danger close. Yeah, so in this particular mission, there's a lot of guys here, so we've actually been given the option to call in air support. So uh, my fire team leader, Aid, who's up there, he's uh, locking the location, and there it goes. Bunch of mortars. And now we take advantage of that, and we get on the move. So there's things like smoke is going on here. The AI can't see through smoke as well, so we have to try and use the environment the best we can. See these guys moving around. 
Team B now. Right. Reloading. Kill. A hit. Not bad going. Right. Grenade launcher again. In doubt. Blow them up. So see, I'm constantly using cover, moving forward. It's a very different type of gameplay to other first-person shooters. You really have to think. You really have to kind of, uh, you know, consider your actions Target and assess the situation around you. Lone walls die young is the saying that we have in the studio. I'm being a little bit lone wolf here, so I'll probably get my ass kicked. But uh, let's see how I go. Oh, oh, he's not seen me. Down. There we go. For everybody who doesn't have the pleasure of actually playing right now, can you describe the uh, the feel of the controls, uh, what's, yeah. what sort of weight there is and what the effect that physics has on the firearm? Absolutely. So we've really gone to town on the kind of the behind-the-gun experience. It was one of the big things we wanted to push out. So apart from just the models as well, you can see they're really gritty, dirty, sort of taped together and so on. We tried to give each gun its own handling. So I've got an M4 here, and um, if I switch to my MP5, it's much quicker. You can see straight away there I've got a much more responsive close-quarters combat weapon. Uh, if I picked up, say, a PKP or one of the big, big, big machine guns, it would be really heavy, like dragging a dog around, basically. We actually kind of take inspiration from the racing studio for that, you know, in the same way that, you know, you, you drive, uh, go from sort of a big Viper to a Ferrari, you really feel the difference in the handling capabilities. We try to do the same thing here, um, so you really feel the difference. Uh, as well as that, we've still got our um, full-on ballistic physics, so the bullets actually have real physics, basically, and uh, if you see a ricochet, that's actually a real object that's, that's ricocheting off something. It's got proper velocity and so on. And it can still kill you. Uh, I have been clocked by a couple of ricochets in there whilst I've been playing the game, so you really got to keep your head down and be careful. But it's sort of the whole idea is to create a real visceral experience, basically, of seeing this stuff kind of uh, whizzing, bullets whizzing past your head, hitting the dirt, dust getting thrown up in your face, etc. And to really give you the fear, basically. That's the idea here. I think we've done a pretty good job on clearing this compound. I'm looking around for my teammates. Yep. Back to the Humvee and move on to the next engagement. All right, Sean, well, I appreciate your time very much guiding us through this demo here. Can you finish us off by uh, letting everybody know when Operation Flashpoint Red River is going to be out in stores and the platforms it'll be out for? Yeah, sure. So you guys can all get your hands on it in April the 26th. Uh, it's coming out on PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. I look forward to seeing you online and kicking your ass. <laughs> All right, folks, it is trivia time, everybody's favorite part of the show. And as we mentioned, we basically have sort of a leftovers from GDC swag bundle. We've got an assortment of goodies, some, some T-shirts, some buttons, some assigned picture of a pretty lady. I don't know the context <laughs> for it. Uh, now, one of the games that we're giving away swag for is called Okabu, a, a PSN downloadable game. Sophia, that is the focus of our trivia question. It is. So our trivia question is, name the developer of the game Okabu. Now, if you have the answer, you can email us at onthespot at gamespot.com or send us the answer in the answer trivia module at the side of the page. And with that, we have reached the end of another great program. Sophia, tell the fine people watching what they can expect to see this weekend. This weekend. So as we mentioned earlier, PAX East is going on in Boston. We have Ricardo and Maxwell there, so be sure to stay tuned for their updates. All right, and we've also got a great Saturday show coming up. We've got a demo for Shift 2 Unleashed, which should be a lot of fun, and a lot of other great stuff coming up as well. So guys, that pretty much does it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Sean McInnes. I'm Sophia Tong. Have a good weekend, everybody. You want some buttons? Yes, I do. All right. Free buttons. Wow, that was a great show. Sophia, oh man. That part in the middle where you fought a bear. Oh gosh. Where that was, was amazing. I for that? You, you were drunk, clearly. All right, bye, everybody. <laughs> well, folks, we have a huge show lined up for you today. We've got not one, not two, but three huge exclusive I'm gonna, demos. I'm going to not say the word huge like nine <laughs> times. So up next, we have This Week on PC. What was that? Oh, wow. <laughs> Crazy switch. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh -huh. like, mm. <laughs>